Welcome to our Spartan Plus Tough Talk webinar. This evening, our discussion on how to elevate your training through breathing is being presented by AeroFit. I'm confident you'll enjoy this deep dive into the world of respiratory science. Whether you are competing in demanding sports or simply want to improve your general well-being, AeroFit breathing training is beneficial for all. Our guests this evening, Spartan Pro BJ Jones and AeroFit Master Instructor Sean Coakley. Let's do a little deep dive into VJ here. We're talking about Spartan Pro with an epic resume of OCR performance at the young age of 23 years old. Seven podiums in 2021, six of those were victories. 26 podiums in the last three years, which is the most in the U.S. and Woo. third worldwide. More to come. 51 career total podium finishes eight career U.S. National Series podiums, which is fourth all-time, only behind Ryan Atkins, Robert Killian, and Ryan Woods. Ladies and gentlemen, I consider VJ OCR's version of Patrick Mahomes, who at the very young age would already be considered a first bout Hall of Famer as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> All right, moving on to Mr. Coakley. Sean is a highly sought after performance breathing coach with over 30 years teaching and coaching experience in yoga, breath work, nutritional sciences, quantum biology, and muscle and mind state psychology. An avid athlete in his younger days, Sean was a division one scholarship soccer player and a competitive cat two cyclist until he experienced several life-changing physical traumas, including cervical and lumbar fractures. His credits, he credits his incredible mentors, breath work, yoga, mind state practices, and a variety of other modalities that brought him from a state of constant pain and depression back to a life full of passion and soulful peace. With formal studies and degrees in public health, epidemiology, and nutritional biochemistry, Sean has strong science-based backgrounds and insights that blend the art of science and breath performance training in a way that benefit all of his clientele. Whether they are chasing gold medals, preparing for the Navy SEALs, struggling or recovering, from pain or illness, or sometimes more importantly, simply coping with stress of everyday life. Sean is the owner and creator of Breathflow, a performance breathing training company based in Vero Beach, Florida, as well as a, the VP of Partnerships and Master Instructor for our sponsor tonight, AeroFit, and has, unique, has the unique pleasure of being able to travel around the globe, improving people's performance while sharing his passion around the power, let's see, his passion around the power of breath, body and mind that's a mouthful. Two amazing guest that was a wow mouthful. listen okay my friends we're going to discuss how you can effectively incorporate respiratory muscle training tonight rmt into your uh, fitness routine we're going to learn how you can improve your breathing to impact your ocr performance assist in your recovery and so much more sean and vj let's get the party started all right all right Wow. Sean, my first question for you, my friend. Listen, we, we prepped a few, about a week ago, we did some prep and I kind of pulled, you pulled me to the edge of my seat with multiple things you shared, but I think I kind of pulled you to the edge of the seat with one of the questions I had. And, you know, I talked about how most athletes are very focused in on their physical training, their nutrition, their rest, recovery, but how the, the fact that the majority, the vast majority of athletes are not focused, focused on the benefits of RMT, respiratory muscle training. Listen, I strongly feel this is our next wave of formal training that millions are going to be using. So, Sean, listen, talk to me about why that, what, what, what I said there, why did that resonate with you? All right. So th thanks for the question, first of all. And, and BJ, I can't believe how young you are. It's ridiculous with Great all those thing, accolades. Man. It's crazy, man. Um, so yeah, Yancy, so listen, uh, because of my background and because of the work I do day in and day out, I, I get more passionate every single day that I do this work. And, and there's one driving factor, especially when it comes to performance athletic environments. It's because no matter the who the who's who list is that I get in front of and that I train, I am reminded daily that the best athletes in the world don't know much about respiratory training at all. They in fact know what they think to be a lot about VO2 max and lactate thresholds, which is another world altogether. But when it comes down to the mechanics of breathing, the biophysiology of breathing, why volumes affect performance, why styles of breathing, 
how you breathe in and out of your body affects the delivery of oxygen to the muscles and so forth. I find out the majority of athletes don't know about these things. So it's a greenfield moment for the world of breath coaches out there. And Aerofit goes about it a very unique way because it gives me as a coach the remote ability to track and validate progress that people are making while they're learning the right methods of breathing in addition to building strength and flexibility around their breath capacities. So it's exciting times, right? Science is catching up with us, Yancy. And now I'm a 52-year-old guy. I wish I had this when I was young to be able to capture data. But as a coach now, I could see data, I could see VJ's data 24 hours a day when he's using this device as a coach and help him accomplish his goals that he wants to accomplish. And that's really exciting for someone like me because the history of breath training is face-to-face in a room, hands-on, touchy-feely stuff. And, and now science has finally caught up with us. So this is exciting times for me. I'm pretty stoked. Love it. Um, for both of you, let's discuss some of the easy to understand benefits of, of RMT for OCR. And specifically for you, VJ, I'm sure the viewers would love to know about specific moments in training and racing uh, where you felt certain key benefits out there on course because of the training that you had put in with your, with your aero fit. For sure. Um, I'd say uh, OCR is very unique compared to a lot of other sports, specifically in the transition uh, period in OCR. You're going switching between energy systems. You're going from a sustained run into heavy, powerful movements, um, challenging obstacles, also things that it, um, affect your breathing specifically. Uh, you'd be surprised to see how many people hold their breath through monkey bars and they come out and they're completely gassed and they don't know how to handle it. Um, but also just the challenge of managing those different uh, energy systems and the different tasks at hand. So um, obviously through training, you can increase the flexibility and the strength of your diaphragm. So you can increase the amount of air that you can bring into your lungs. And that's just going to make you more efficient. I'm sure Sean can go very far into the the science of why that helps and everything like that, other than the obvious reasons. Um, but I would say the number one thing that I felt was a strength and a mindfulness in my breathing in, in, in high intensity states. So uh, when I say that, I mean, I feel in control. Uh, at no point did I ever feel overwhelmed. A lot of people get to a, a really high operating level and then they start breathing really fast and they're like trying to catch their breath and people say like i'm trying to catch my breath i never reached that point i was always in control i was always um comfortable even operating at you know heart rates over 180 turning myself inside out for you know up to like an hour i was always very comfortable where i was i felt like my breathing was more efficient because i was really focusing on uh filling my lungs all the way with air expelling all the way out and I was able to set into a rhythm without really thinking about it too much. Uh, I just felt a lot more efficient and in, in a sport where uh, you basically get gut checked every uh, every few minutes with an obstacle, it was awesome to be able to have something that was just completely under control and nothing that I ever felt worried about. Uh, I'd say that was like my number one coming out of, uh, you know, consistent training with AeroFit device. Yeah, so I, can tell BJ, wanna, I can tell you want to dive into the weeds a little deeper there. <laughs> yeah, I was getting excited. But, you know, I, I also want to say this because, you know, VJ and I met months back, uh, you know, when we had our first initial conversations about that. And I want to I want to give a couple real quick props to VJ because not every athlete comes at me as a coach or someone introducing a new concept to them with a real background or a real scientific perspective. And so so VJ, props to you for being uh hardlined with me and challenging me in the beginning on what this thing does and what this thing doesn't. So that's really respect going out to you because you're looking for marginal gains. But the interesting part for me, Yancy, is when I hear VJ, you know, VJ is describing um, my world, the objective versus subjective nature of what this respiratory muscular training can bring you. So there's the art and the science, if you will, of, bre of, of breathing. And so the highest level athletes in the world, at least the ones I think who are, you know, kind of open-minded, will state that it's a level of competence that this gives you. When you get to the starting line, you know that you have this lighter feeling. As, as V just says, 
you know, you don't feel like you have a weight on your chest. You could breathe at ease at capacity. And I, I equate that to confidence and, and, and feeling good about your ability to compete at your highest level. So in a funny and interesting way, that's the opposite of why I work to prove all the time because I'm, I'm pushed to prove scientific things all the time. So I'm mm-hmm. actually thrilled that Vijay's mentioning this because nothing feels better than the sensation of not feeling out of breath when you're working at your hardest. I mean, that's really what the limiting factors are. So if you can go into a competition, whether it's your first Spartan race or you're reaching at the highest levels like DJ, if you could approach it knowing that you don't feel out of breath and you know that ahead of time going in, your level of confidence and engagement is through the roof because that limiting factor goes away. And most likely everybody's done the, the glycogen loading and the, the rest and the recovery and all the prep that they have to do. And this adds that extra little bit of marginal gain to get your confidence going, which is such an incredible thing to feel. And, and nothing else quite does it like respiratory muscular training, which is really cool. So it's not just VJ, it's, it's the top level athletes around the world who are giving the same feedback. There's been so much specific research and testing on RMT and, and, and talk to me and it'd be impossible. I saw like 50 studies. Can it's a long talk list. Talk to me about the couple high levels, like the, the, the two or three that just really like speak to you when you're talking to the masses. Okay. And I, I won't go too deep in the weeds yet. Yes. I promise you I'll get there later. Right. So what, one, to me, one of the most exciting things is this thing called respiratory muscle metabol reflex. And that's a mouthful I know. So let me, let me distill it down to something simple. The respiratory muscles utilize oxygen, just like any other muscle group. And they also have nerve endings that are very raw nerve endings, if you will, compared to some of the rest of the body. So the sympathetic nervous system reacts very highly when the respiratory musculature gets distressed because the core of who we are, the primal instincts of what we are as human beings wrapped up in our primal brain are the the brain, the heart, and the lungs. That's what keeps us alive. The locomotors, as this metabol reflex starts to work, if you're after RMT, if if your respiratory musculature is not in shape, if it's not strong and flexible and utilizing less oxygen itself, eventually that lactic acid concentrate touches these raw nerve endings in the respiratory musculature and sends a signal to the sympathetic nervous system to shut down. And what I mean by shut down is vasoconstrict the locomotor muscles, the legs and the arms, the big engine muscles, and bring the oxygen back to center. So by doing respiratory muscular training, you can delay or abolish the onset of that metabol reflex. And what does that mean? Simply oxygen delivery and blood delivery still will be delivered to the legs and the arms. It doesn't get pulled back by our primal brain system and Mm -hmm. protect what it thinks it's doing. Like its job is to keep us alive. It's a sympathetic reaction. So this is a really, I I learned about this somewhat recently in, in the big picture of things as an academic study that was done that respiratory muscle training specifically can stop that vasoconstriction when you're getting close to lactate threshold and allow you to work for more time than you would without respiratory muscular training. It's a huge thing. And this is like, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of an additional 4% performance uh, increases, which I'll get into more detail later. So if you talk marginal gains, like in the world of VJ, where a 0.25% gain might be the difference between gold and silver, we're talking, you know, three, four percent increase benefit if you consistently train with RMT because of this metabol reflex. That it, it, that's stunning to a guy like me. At the end of the day, it's it's giving people a tremendous benefit factor over the competition. If if their comp's not doing RMT and they're not getting this benefit, it's going to be a lot harder for them to be victorious at the end of the day. My old coach called that legal cheating. It's legal cheating. <laughs> <laughs> there's no doping there's no blood test you'll fail uh you know it, and and that's the reality of it and, it and it does go down it goes deeper into the weeds with this type of training and other styles like apnea training that you talk about you could affect erythropoietin output increases epo output increases there's a whole myriad of biophysiological adaptives that happen when you do this breath training it's, it's really cool we were joking about every now and then something comes along and it's like as an athlete, you know, you, you're hesitant 
to to truly want to share and, and and market what you have you now know about um dj what are your what are your thoughts on that we you know we're, we're obviously <laughs> educating, we're educating a lot of people on on aerofit and rmt right now <laughs> um I don't know. I think I've been pretty open with my approach to training and everything that I've done. I don't think anything's a secret. Like uh, probably my biggest tool over the past few years has been my focus into running mechanics and and uh, really working on that side uh, of my performance and being a very speed-based athlete versus like a heavy volume athlete like most of the other athletes in this sport. Um, and I think I was pretty open when I started using AeroFit. Like the first time I started using it consistently, was probably six to eight weeks leading into the North American OCR championships back in 2019. And, um, you know, it was an amazing experience it was something that was such a high octane event, just like selling out, pushing your body to the limit for 18 minutes. Uh, having that confidence in this system was, uh, like just a, I felt strong, you know, mm -hmm. coming up and down mountains where like your body's getting jolted, uh, descending a 20% grade as fast as you can. And you're just still confidently moving air through your lungs. It was amazing. So I, I mean, like, I, I think that this is going to be a huge uh, part of training in the next few years, especially in endurance sport. But I mean, it's just a natural progression here. And I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. That's so cool. Sean, I would, uh, I think we would be doing the the viewers a major disservice if we didn't dive into like take me the guy that knows this at an elementary level walk me through exactly what's happening physiologically as i start so i get my arrow fit i start using it today and then i i do it the way you would want me to use it for the next two three four five six weeks consistently talk to me exactly what's happening um and, and why i'm starting to feel benefits before we it's do a that, great, it, before yeah, we do ahead, that, I think we want to preface what the AeroFit device actually is, okay? Uh, in OCR a few years ago, there was something that came out called the training mask. And everyone was running around with this thing strapped to their face that was going to restrict airflow so that you were meant to exercise with breathing resistance. That is not what this is. You take this device, and yes, this is an amazing device where you can adjust you know, resistance in breathing in and exhaling, but actually you take this and paired with their app, which does uh, programming for pretty much anything you could want to get into. This is a separate training regimen apart from the training that you already do. This is something that you do once or twice a day. You follow their programs, you breathe the way that they tell you, and then you make improvements. So don't put this in your mouth and go for a 10 mile run. It is Thank not you, going to be used appropriately. Okay. No, that, that's a great point. And I was I was talking to somebody the other day and I'm like, you talk about pulling people to the edge of their seat when you tell them that they can sit in front of their laptop and work while they're training and that and you mean it, you authentically mean it. That's pretty freaking awesome. And that's the truth. We're not leading you astray when we tell you that. No, it's 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 amazing. And at, at the high at every level, right? There's so much there's so much we're pulled into needing to do on a day-to-day -day basis to actually sit down and relax and, and engage. This is a, a five to 10 minute a day meditation at the end of the day, even if you can consider it work. So, so to even start way at the basics, Yancy, you know, what, what people don't understand and they get disconnected with is they take advantage of their breathing every day. Most people running around at high speed, meaning mental thought processes all day long, um, are not listening to their breath. They're not paying attention to where their breath is going. They're not finding themselves holding their breath during moments of concentration and restricting the oxygen uptake that they could be taking advantage of. So there's, in a, in a nice way, in the beginning, as anybody who hasn't really paid attention to their breathing before, I believe that this brings a great general awareness to your breath because you're seeing your breath expressed on a stream. You're following a little red ball across the stream and you're directly connected to that. It's the inhale and exhale power and finesse, if you will, of following an expressive pattern of breathing on a screen. So nothing else really matters. I know this of me. When I use my AeroFit, everything else disappears because all I want is that ball to be on the line. Nothing else when that ball is moving across the screen. 
So it, I think it allows people who have not learned the benefit of connecting with their breath yet, the, the ability to get rid of distractions and to hone in on what's really important, the core of who we are, because breathing is the strongest urge we have. And, and I always like to demonstrate this where if I, if I were to come to your house right now, Yancy, put a pillow over you and hold it down, eventually you're going to punch and kick and scream and get me off of you with all your might. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a real primal thing that we do, but we don't connect with it because we basically think it's voluntary not in, or you know, it's the involuntary versus voluntary aspects of it. It happens all the time, but at the end of the day, we can control it and there's massive benefit to control it. So back to you, back to your question, though, you answer really yeah. quick. So, so let's, I like, I'd like to start by telling everybody that the benefits that are gained from a breath practice, which the, which the um, AeroFit device really brings you through, because it's, it's a, it's not a panacea, but it does a lot more than just provide resistance because it teaches you um, to create new patterns or habits of breathing that are bioperformance scientifically correct. So there's, there's all these ancillary systems inside of the body, the nervous system, the psychosomatic system, the, the mind and body, the endocrine system, the lymphatic system, all these systems are affected by how we breathe, how shallow or how deep we breathe, the rate and the pace of how we breathe. So almost every system in our body is affected one way or another from how we take in an exhale breath. And all along the sensory mechanisms the auditory mechanisms, the, the, the way, how you hear the breath come in and out of the body, how you feel the breath come in and out of the body, all of those things affect how that breath is amplifying or declining your performance capacities. So, so there's more at play. It's, it's, it's a little bit more of a, a complex web than most people realize. But in the beginning, what we're basically trying to do, the first day you get this AeroFit device, what we're really trying to do is get your muscles working the right way. And that's why when VJ brought up that you don't do this while you're running, there's a very good reason. I don't want, or AeroFit does not want your other locomotor muscles working. I don't want your rectus abdominis muscles under tension because if they're under tension, then your rib cage can't flare open and flex and stretch in the right way. So we want to isolate the respiratory muscles so you can consciously develop a full breathing pattern, not just the frontal plane, of breathing. AeroFit wants you to breathe into the lateral sides of your rib cage, into the back side of your rib cage, into the thorax region of your rib cage without creating stress in the body at the, by cringing your shoulders up and so forth. So everybody on who's watching this has to realize there's so many areas of access that we don't take advantage of as human beings. And when you train with this, it forces your muscles to engage in a 360 degree rotational plane, if you will. So you can't just isolate and compound your negative style of breathing that you've already developed over your lifetime. So it's breaking down old habits and starting to create new habits that make you more efficient. And I would argue that's an incredibly, that's a huge thing for people. And it's a big thing to take in right now is most people do not learn how to breathe properly. And the intelligence that's inside of this device, inside of the app, is based on science. It's based on hundreds and thousands of years, literally, of yoga style breathing, of scientific style breathing, of, of a myriad of different breath coaching styles. It's all inside of the app, and it's all laid out very easily for everybody to use. So we engage and build new habits and go away from shallow breathing for the wrong reasons or over breathing and gassing off CO2. So it's, it's a beautiful little educational device at the end of the day. It's not just strength and flexibility at the end of the day. So it's, um, this is why I get so stoked about it because I want to teach everybody in the world how to breathe well because it makes you feel better. It doesn't make you just perform better. It makes you happier too. So if you get your head wrapped around that and you start breathing with this device and it makes you a better breather, everything starts to get better, not just better performance. And that's, where do you get that these days? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that, it's a pretty big deal. So. So you, you kind of, you, you talked about, you know, we've talked a lot about performance, but you briefly mentioned, you know, you guys kind of have a nice little triangle where it's performance, fitness, and wellness. Um, talk to us about some of the benefits, you know, for, so VJ's performing at a high level, but maybe VJ's mom or grandparents 
or somebody else in his life that's just looking to be a little better version of themselves. They're not, they're not looking to end up on the podium. Talk about that, the fitness and the wellness piece of your, of your pyramid. <clears throat> yeah, thank, thanks, thanks for bringing that up because that's, it's maybe a big misunderstanding. If you were to look at Aerofit's website, for example, we've, we look very much like a high athletic performance company. And in fact, we probably help as many people who are elderly or are suffering from COPD and asthma and post-COVID recovery and things of that nature. And it's just not what we always market to because we're always busy training athletes. So, so in reality, if you have a 75-year-old grandma or mom who is sitting in a chair most of the day and sedentary and has COPD, Utilizing an AeroFit for one to two minutes a day for a person in that state is A, it's exercise. B, it gets the heart rate going. It opens up the sweat glands a little bit. It gets activity back into the person. That activity helps them get out of depressive states, helps them re-engage in creativity, gets the mind woken up again, starts them thinking again. You get more oxygen delivery to the brain. So for me, as a therapeutic device, this has the ability to change the world in a lot of ways. I know that might sound ambitious uh, or, yeah, come on, Sean, give me a break kind of thing. But think about the elderly population out there that is sedentary and how do they have access to exercise? Let's say they have diabetes and they have swollen legs and they can't walk around that much. How are they going to get quality exercise in? This gives them that opportunity because to breathe through this as you build up over time, as VJ could tell you, and I could tell you, I use this on a regular basis. This is a workout for me over time because I keep progressing and I sweat when I use this device. I, I get a lot of heat built up in my body and it works out my systems. It gets the blood flow going. So once you get blood flow going again and you get oxygen delivery to the systems and it wakes up the mitochondria, it starts to create energy, people start to feel better. The dopamine starts to kick in the melatonin serotonin cycle starts to regulate so you could sleep better. So you're not exhausted all the time. There's all these wonderful ancillary benefits and those same benefits help VJ just as much as they help an elderly person struggling with health benefits. So it's universally ex uh, adaptable in that regard. Same thing, different, different weighted areas, if you will, because VJ is gonna work harder at a different resistance level, if you will, than an 80 year old person who's trying to just feel good about themselves. But the physiology is the same across the board, Yancey. So for me, it's easy to talk about because just breathe into the device, it's gonna get things going for you in the right direction. It's that simple. Awesome. It's super cool, yeah. Hey, VJ, talk to me about um, in those times since 2019 when you felt like you've had a good training cycle where you used it exactly how you wanted to use it. What does that look like every day? The amount of time, the time of day, kind of educate us on, on how that, how you specifically worked it into your training. So Sean mentioned earlier that it was kind of like a meditation that happens um, during your day. And they're short sessions. I would do uh, between five and 10 minutes, usually 10 minute sessions, and I would do them twice a day. Um, sometimes it would be once a day, like early on in the cycle, but leading into an event, like three to four weeks out. It was twice a day, every day, morning and evening. Um, so first thing when I wake up, I would go outside, sit at a chair, nice morning, and I would start um, doing the scheduled programming. Um, and honestly, it is uh, like a like a, an exercise meditation of sorts. We're sitting there, all you have to do is focus on moving that line up and down along the plotted course. Um, that you're supposed to do. So that was kind of what my training looked like. And the programming was very interesting. Like once you set yourself up on a certain program, there's different programs already built in there. Uh, fortunately for me, I linked up with Sean and he was able to put a program together specific to my goals. So um, workouts will kind of vary. You'll have a lot of consistency, but then you'll pop into some different things, which is cool, which I think is a good segue into um, the different benefits that you get from the device from the different styles of programming um, so you would initially do a test when you first start using the device where it was going to test uh, your strength in your inhalation and exhalation but also uh, the total volume that you can inhale and exhale and that gives you a score so you can kind of track your own progress as you go 
but throughout the programming, you're going to do different things. Uh, one of the main things that you do is um, uh, you're going to follow a pattern breathing. Where you're going to exhale a certain amount, usually fully, and then you'll relax and you'll inhale very hard and you'll just kind of follow the programming. Uh, but aside from that, my probably, probably my favorite was when you'd have scheduled breathing and then you would exhale as much as you could and you would hold. And those times would get longer as you progressed in the training to where you're exhaling all of the air in your lungs and you had to get comfortable staying in this like hypoxic state, I guess would be uh, how to describe yeah. that. Um, and you got to kind of control yourself to where uh, you don't freak out and trust in your process and you get more comfortable um, without fresh oxygen entering your lungs. Um, and I feel like that's a really cool element that we haven't touched on. We've talked about how, uh, you know, strengthening all those muscles is really great. And I'm sure we can go further into that, but I'd like to talk about a little bit of that specific programming that we faced, um, how that benefits people and, 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 and why you want to spend time with your lungs completely empty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a really interest. It's a really yeah, interesting. Go ahead, Yancy. No, you guys right, have Yancy. the floor. Let's go. I'm listening. Oh, right on, dude. That's me awesome. Now. All right, cool, cool. So, so BJ brings up a couple cool things. So, so let me start by saying uh, thanks to people like VJ. And, and, you know, again, I say I love my job. I get to work with really intelligent people who are athletically minded and are goal oriented. Right. So they, 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 they want things to work. They're going to push back on this. So the protocols that are created inside of the app that BJ is talking about. So we, we now, thankfully, we've come a long way since I met BJ. Back in the early days when I wrote BJ a protocol, it was me uh, literally penning protocols in Excel sheets saying, do this mode at this resistance at this amount at this time of the day. And that was certainly not scalable for our company on any level. Uh, I was a big choke point, right, at the end of the day. So we had to stop that. So we started to find that we were getting really good feedback from people like BJ, people in the pro cycling peloton and all other places. So we started to keep track of these protocols that I had been creating. And I had created, you know, upwards of 250 protocols over the past year, custom ones for really great athletes around the world. So we now have started over the past three or four months digitizing all those protocols. So as of right now, you could actually go in to the AeroFit app and find an OCR protocol. Now, wink, wink, a big portion of that protocol was developed with my thoughts about how I created something for VJ, right? So, so there's, a, there's a synergistic feedback loop. Now, I'm not gonna give away all VJ secrets, if you will, but th there's a synergistic feedback mechanism where me as a coach, I have a coaching dashboard. I get to watch how VJ trains every day, whether I talk to him or not. And I get to see the output and the progress that he makes. And as a scientific coach, I look at that and then I tweak those protocols to make sure they're working properly for people as best they can. So that being said, that, that's what the consumer is getting. They're getting real validated protocols that have been kind of tested in the field, if you will, from really strong competitive people, which is cool. Uh, so I think that's a big deal. Now, on to apnea. Uh, and, and hypoxic state training. Now, this is, this is really cool. And a lot of people don't know it, but let me preface it by saying it's not rocket science. So anybody who's listening, don't get nervous. Just take a deep breath, slow down, listen to what I'm saying. I'll repeat it again if I have to, but it's not that complicated. I come from a world of free divers where the, the life of a free diver is learning to hold your breath for long periods of time. Now, I, I'm not a outrageously great free diver, but I can hold my breath over five minutes and 30 seconds, a pretty reasonable breath hold at the end of the day. And so in order to do that, I have to temper my body and my brain to be able to tolerate carbon dioxide differently than other people. And CO2 or carbon dioxide is the respiratory metabolic byproduct from breathing. So as we take in oxygen, which gets distributed to our muscular tissue or our tissue into the cell, into the mitochondria, and it cycles through with a O2 molecule and a glucose molecule, and it creates energy in your cell. That's the, the old high school adage. It's the ATP Krebs cycle that we all remember, but we probably can't recreate on paper, right? ATP yeah. converts to ADP, you get energy. Now, the question becomes, how do we become more efficient at delivering those O2 molecules to the tissue? Here's where the cool, and this is where it gets cool. 
the more you're able to practice these hypoxic states, as VJ said, exhaling and, and stop breathing for a period of time. So carbon dioxide increases quickly in that environment where you're, you're not refreshing or utilizing the respiratory exchange rate. You stop breathing, you're under apnea, no more breathing. CO2 is building up. The biochemical receptors in your primal brain are scanning for increases of CO2 all the time. And it says, I don't like that. That's not good for me. Start to breathe, dummy. And it triggers a reaction, a sympathetic, fearful reaction to make you breathe. Now, a long time ago in Denmark, there was this professor, Professor Bohr, who documented this thing, which is now known as the Bohr effect. Quite simply, he showed that when CO2 rises, the release of O2 increases. Well, I'll say that again. As you get comfortable with O2 rising, you could tolerate a slightly increased gradient of CO2 in your blood. Oxygen releases easier from the hemoglobin it's attached to as it's being distributed throughout your arterial system. So therefore, it can release and be distributed to the tissue where it's converted into energy. So the overbreathing that VJ mentioned earlier on, the, ha, 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 the hyperventilation recovery breath that we all used to do, at least I was taught to do that when I was young, right? That is scientifically the worst thing you can do. You are gassing off all this CO2 under panic, ramping up the adrenaline output in the body, your endocrine system kicks in, your respiratory rate goes up. Think about that logically. Do you think you'll consume more oxygen doing that or less oxygen doing that? More. So this drama over breathing has a, neg a, a dualistic negative compounding effect. You ramp up your respiratory rate and you don't release oxygen to the tissue. So you're losing twice. So now the modern way of training is simply to become comfortable with the stressful feeling that you previously had of breathlessness and face it with a smile while you're training with the air of it and get used to it. So your brain gets tempered, if you will, to say, this is not a bad thing. I'm not under panic. I don't need to shut you down or turn you off. I could allow you to operate at this in this way. And you now, or we all know now, that that sensation that you feel is what is allowing you to deliver more O2 to your tissue. So you have to, in, in the world of mental state psychology, you have to adapt this hardcore and know that science is backing this idea and that delivering more oxygen is benefited by dealing with a little bit more stress for a short period of time. So things get, a, like VJ said, things, we'll talk VJ about like, when do you choose to start doing this style of apnea breathing? Because it gets a little bit worse before it gets a lot better because you have to go through a training trough, right? Like you get a little bit slower, if you will, going through this methodology, but you quickly come up on the other side and go up in performance over time as you develop this new habit of breathing that is scientifically documented to show increased levels of performance and health. It's that simple. So yeah, see, there's, the way I said that, I hope that that's understandable for people. I know it might be a complex thing, but does that make sense what I just said? 100%. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going in the right direction then. All right. Good. So, so basically, through doing apnea training, you get your body comfortable with higher levels or higher percentages of CO2 mm -hmm. throughout the bloodstream, throughout the tissue. And one, that makes your nervous system less panicked. And two, your body can actually transmit oxygen to your uh, tissue much more efficiently under those, exactly. uh, those circumstances. Exactly. Event, event number two at the Spartan Games, uh, everybody's going to listen is like, wow, this, this training would have paid off dramatically when I was hurting bad in that test. And I know you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. BJ. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if that would have even helped. I'm just going to put that out there. That was <laughs> something else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hey, I, I want to so, get to uh, go. Go ahead, Sean. No, no. I want one more thing because a, a yeah. lot of these conversations in the mo if, if you're a breathing geek like I am, right? There's a lot of literature. There's a couple of great books out there right now that talk about the benefit of nose breathing, 
So, so I, and I know VJ wanted to talk about this a little too. So that's kind of where I wanted to go next, Yancy, a little bit, because pe people look at this device and the dogmatic nose breathers of the world um, want to believe that they breathe through their nose 24 hours a day because there's tremendous benefits to breathe through your nose. It far outweighs breathing through your mouth. So Aerofit gets questioned a lot, almost daily. Well, I'm not using your device, Aerofit, because I'm a nose breather. So why, why do I want to train using my mouth? So I, I want to cover that really quickly because it's an important question. So as VJ stated, and he's an elite athlete, let's not forget that, right? A, a, a very high elite level athlete. VJ was training with this, you know, 10 to 20 minutes a day max, uh, maximum. And so this pipe, the nose as a plumber, this pipe is a lot smaller than this pipe. And when you're training the respiratory musculature system, we want the ability to move volumes of air. And so if you, you know, how much volume can you get through a bigger pipe than versus a small pipe? It's easier to move air in and out of your mouth. And it's very difficult too, from a product perspective to create additional resistance and plug it in your nose. So what I don't want the nose breathers of the world to walk away from with this is to think that we're trying to convince them to breathe through their mouth. We're not. We are advocates of nose breathing. And in fact, respiratory muscular training with a device like Aerofit strengthens and creates the flexibility in the musculature of your respiratory mechanics to where it actually becomes easier to relax and breathe through your nose. So they mutually benefit each other. So on the record, I am saying Aerofit loves nose breathing and we only use this a few minutes a day. So if you want to breathe through your nose 23 minutes and 50 seconds a day, go for it by all means. But if you wanna increase the strength and flexibility of your muscles, this is a more efficient method than trying to do it through your nose. So value for time benefit comes quicker and you get to work out less amount of time per day. And that's a value to everybody at the end of the day. And so there's a lot of other things. So, you know, nose breathing, Yancey, filtration, humidification, warming of the nose, like Bear Mountain, you know, the, the weather gets cold. You want to warm the air as it's coming in. And there's a slight benefit that you get from the nitric oxide that's created in the sinus cavity as you breathe in through your nose, which you don't get breathing through your mouth. And there's a myriad of other benefits people can talk about, but those are the main ones. And nitric oxide, for example, is a vasodilator. It helps relax the respiratory circulatory system. So theoretically, you're better off getting those molecules than not getting those molecules. So there is a real good reason to want to breathe through your nose, even while you're competing, if you're capable of doing that. And that's something you build up to over time, becoming comfortable with this apnea concept that VJ is talking about. Right. Like uh, one of my big off season goals this year is to really start working on uh, specifically nose breathing and also doing some apnea training outside of Aerofit uh, with something that you introduced me to apnea walks. Um, mm -hmm. So switching to nose breathing, uh, obviously we can list all the benefits, but um, it's really hard to transition when you're in the middle of a competitive season because you will take a dip. So you mm -hmm. got to kind of pick and choose where you can do it. And off season is a perfect time to start transitioning to some of that work so that you can take the low and then have enough time to get above and really excel at the new skill. Yes. And, and what I really love about it, when the, one of the beautiful outcomes of apnea training uh, for, for endurance sports or running sports is it allows a shift in your parasympathetic sympathetic re, uh, relationship where the amount, the maximum amount of output of work is regulated in a different way because now it becomes more residing in the parasympathetic nervous system than the sympathetic nervous system. So what does that mean? That means you systematically allow yourself to have more fuel over time. You're not engaging in the adrenaline and cortisol output that you do because you're mentally trying to will yourself to do more. So when you breathe through your nose, it's a more calm energy that you create while you're competing, while you're training. And it allows you to operate at what some people would argue is your true maximum output capacity without overdoing it. So if you're mouth breathing and willfully, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna crush this. And that's the only fuel that you have is your mental willpower and adrenaline. You're gonna tap out a lot faster than someone who's regulating those outputs. So nose breathers typically regulate those outputs in a better, more efficient manner. So you have more, you're a diesel engine 
rather than a turbo engine burning off petrol quick. And so you slowly build up over time and you're able to operate at your maximum speed for longer than if you're a sympathetic athlete burning glucose and oxygen faster and counting on adrenaline to beat the guy to the finish line. You'd rather be able to turn the turbo on a hundred mm -hmm. meters from the finish line and have that in reserve and not have burned all that out before you get there. So to me, that's one of the beauties of this new style of breathing. It gives you as an athlete control of your nervous system. So you could turn on the jets when you want to, not all the time under assumed panic. And most athletes don't even know they're under panic. Their sympathetic nervous system is just active all the time because they're willfully trying to beat everybody rather than managing their race strategy. And I think, VJ, that's one of the things that you're really good at is implementing a strategy and managing that strategy. And things change, of course, in races. But sticking to the plan and not panicking, that's a big deal in your line of work, I would say. 100%. With, yeah. uh, with so much sympathetic and parasympathetic talk, obviously HRV comes to mind. Are, are we showing Im improvements in, in HRV re recovery with, with uh, use of the AeroFit consistently? Yes. Yeah. And let me answer that carefully because I don't want anybody to call us out. So, so um, there's a really interesting group of people out there. There's, a, there's an organization called heartmath.org. Um, and, and I know some of the people who are involved in that organization and they train people to utilize what's called coherent breathing in the breathing space, in the breathing world. Right. And let me, let me break down coherent breathing simplistically. And some people out there will get mad at me at the simplistic explanation, but let me give you the simple one. Coherent breathing is basically five seconds, inhale, five seconds, exhale, it's six breaths a minute at the end of the day, studies have shown that that rhythm of breathing for whatever reason, I won't get into the weeds of biochemistry yet, uh, uh, creates a resonant response in the body to relax at a, in a certain way where HRV is increased. And for everybody who's new to HRV, heart rate variability, um, at the end of the day, the heart does not work like a metronome. It does not tick tock in exact time. It's erratic, your heart rate is erratic. The more erratic, if you will, the heart rate is, the more heart rate variability you have, the more relaxed you are. So heart rate variably, variability is a measuring paradigm that shows you if you are in fact out of stress state, out of the stressful state. And so being able to manipulate and improve that HRV score is really important. So, so things, you know, um, bracelets like Whoop and things like Aura Ring, and other things like that, they track HRV. We don't, we don't specifically track HRV with AeroFit, but the core of being able to manipulate HRV to become better is mental control and breath control. So AeroFit trains you in both of those areas. It allows you to focus better and it allows you to learn the proper rhythms of breathing to manipulate to get a better HRV score. So at AeroFit, we love Whoop, we love Aura. We love all those companies because they capture biometrics we don't. And we've seen through my work with athletes, I've seen a lot of unique correlations and improved HRV scores have been shown, but it's simple. Improve your breathing technique, utilize coherent breathing when you're not competing, your HRV gets better and therefore your sleep gets better. Your recovery gets better. Your stress levels in life go down. So I think that there's, uh, such a direct correlation to how you breathe in HRV. It hasn't been studied enough yet, but the theory has been proven. And the more people who do it, the better they're going to have in terms of manipulating that HRV score at the end of the day. Hey, before we run out of time, let's jump on a few uh, of the Q and a, some of the questions and see what, it, see what it sparks up here. Um, our first one here, what is the harm of mouth breathing during training? You, you, you hit that one with a good answer earlier. Um, moving on to the second one here. How do you breathe when running fast? So this is for VJ. How do you breathe when running fast and when doing heavy carries, heavy stuff? And how do you switch between those? <clears throat> um, well, it, it, it kind of depends on what the situation is and everything like that. Um, I definitely try to be a little more mindful, especially since using AeroFit, um, to have a rhythm to stick to it. Uh, I don't 
do nose breathing as of right now. That's a skill I hope to learn. Uh, I'm pretty much an open airway guy. I'm, I'm breathing in through my nose and mouth at the same time and exhaling through everything. Um, but transitioning through everything, uh, one thing that I, I try to teach people, especially when they come through like my obstacle course and things like that is uh, a little bit of practice of how you breathe when you're um, under heavy loads or when you're on obstacles. So many people, even at the highest level, they come up to an obstacle and they stand there for a couple of seconds to try to breathe to get ready because usually when they get on an obstacle, they stop breathing or they take these little <laughs> these little breaths like they're lifting heavy weights or something. When actually, if you can force yourself to be relaxed and comfortable, you can recover on these obstacles. You look at some of the very top like 1% athletes in this sport, they are recovering when they get on obstacles, even in carries. Depending on the situation, you can walk with a heavy bucket on your back, take some deep breaths and keep that rhythm going. So I'd say it's mainly in training. You need to practice um, how you breathe and how you transition through these things versus getting into this panic mode. Um, it's, it seems that overwhelming your body and getting into this panic state is a, is a big enemy across the board. Um, whether you're doing specific respiratory training or if you're just trying to find your rhythm in an obstacle race. So uh, practice outside of it, um, maintaining a rhythm through all obstacles. And uh, that's, that's the best advice I could offer. Yeah, and VJ, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna yeah. tag onto that one quick statement. So there's a, a unique term in the world of respiratory muscular training or, or in respiratory science, um, oxygen uptake kinetics, right? Sounds really fancy, right? But what does that really mean? the ability to transition faster from resting to a new exercise. So intermittent engagement. So if you go from a sprint to a stop to a sprint again, respiratory or inspiratory muscular training has been shown to be effective to increase the time or excuse me, decrease the amount of time and increase the energy in those transitions. So if you're utilizing RMT on a regular basis, the oxygen uptake kinetics are faster, which means after you go through an obstacle, because you've trained the respiratory system a specific way with RMT, oxygen delivery increase time is, happens much faster. So you're able to get oxygen to the muscle a lot quicker. To your point, I watched the Spartan races out in California. I saw so many people going to the obstacles and holding their breath through it was killing me. I, I was screaming a lot of times out there, breathe for God's sake. Um, and they weren't, and you saw their muscles stiffen up. You saw their constriction of their arms and their legs from tension not from usage, right? Because they were holding their breath and that destroyed them. They got off and then hands on the knees recovering for 30 seconds before they start to run again. So it, it's a really great thing to practice. I would agree with you hundred percent, BJ. I, I think we have the, this must be like a family member of yours or something, Sean, that this is the greatest softball question. They teed this one up for you, man. This All is right. Sean. Do you have any breathing protocols or techniques you can share for OCR athletes they can practice with? <laughs> Ma'am, yeah, of course I do. Yes, I can. <laughs> and, well, so, so at the end of this, when we talk to you about this really cool exclusive offer we're going to give to the Spartan community when it comes to AeroFit, yes. In fact, we just released, this is very recent, maybe three weeks ago, we just populated the OCR protocol into the AeroFit app itself. And, and let, me, let me talk about that really quick. So the, these protocols, the initial protocols that you do when you, when you pick a sport inside of AeroFit, the protocol is three months long to begin with. And the first month, let me get this out in the open. The first month treats people as if they don't know how to breathe well at all. So I want to say this. The first month could be to some type A aggressive people, a little mundane, a little boring because the resistance levels are low. The amount of time you're putting in is not 15 to 20 minutes. But I need to say this to everybody listening. We are, as I said to you last time, Nancy, I'm in the business of sneaking up on nervous systems and changing habits. If I give this device to somebody and I put this in their mouth and I say, turn it up to the hardest resistance and go for 20 minutes, your brain and your nervous system are not going to create a new habit. You're going to compound your bad habit. So I ask everybody, everybody who decides to start training with this device, go through the first month. Don't skip around. Don't jump to the next month. You'll never change your habit. So when you're out in the field, your old habit will kick back in. 
trust me, in month two and month three, it gets much harder and you'll start sweating and training and you'll feel it. But by then your new habits will be ingrained and you'll be forever a new style of person and a happier comp competitor. So go through the pain, if you will. So for Spartans who like to work hard all the time, I'm asking you to work really hard at going slow for a month to develop this new habit. It's worth the pain. This is the same process that we go through for uh, running mechanics, actually, mm -hmm. um, and working on mechanical threshold. And whenever you're making adjustments, um, trying to build new movement patterns, you always do it in short bursts. You avoid fatigue at all costs so that you're not overwhelming your body with too many demands at one time. You don't want to be having to you know, try to battle a high heart rate, battle lactate production, and try to find a new efficient way of moving. So it, it's cool to see that, that those parallels there. Yeah, it's cool. Thanks for compounding that, BJ. It's important for people to really understand that you can't change your old habits by forcefully, willfully, aggressively trying to change them. It simply doesn't work at the end of the day. So yeah, good question. <laughs> uh, I think Yancey's, Yancey's muted or something. What's going Hang on? Hang on. I had some dogs barking in the background. I had to close myself up. There. <laughs> I got to bring this question up, Sean, because I know it played a role in your life, actually. I sure. uh, haven't been through therapy for chronic pain management. I learned that a similar type of controlled and measured breathing helps reduce pain. Um, can you expand upon that, how, how you can help control pain? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's really a critical thing because most people in this world go through bouts of pain at one point or of time or another. And it, it does come down to being able to control the mental state and, and breath is the most powerful tool to help control your mental state at the end of the day. Remember, I mentioned earlier, all these ancillary, this ancillary web of systems that our breath affects as, as we take in breath and expel breath from the body, the, the mind and nervous system is paying attention to the sounds of your breathing, to, to the rate of your breath it affects you more dramatically than you think it does. So when I was, when I had my cycling accident and I lost what was, I was hoping to be a very good career in the world of cycling, um, I a, got depressed. I lost my, my goal, my drive in life for a period of time. I fractured bones in my spine and I wasn't able to do what I used to do and what I love to do. So it was complicated by depressed thoughts, uh, a loss of, 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 of will, a lack of a plan. And I had pain and my doctor was giving me opioids. Now, I, I fundamentally disagree with the taking of pain meds unless it's absolutely critical. So I flushed mine down the toilet and I cried for a couple months because I was in a lot of pain. And so a friend of mine brought me to a yoga class. This was 30 plus years ago. And I went into a hot yoga room, which is it's popular now. It was hard to find back then. And I went into this room and it started to open up the fascia in my body, if you will, start to stretch the soft tissue out again. And the only way I could access that in order to rebuild my physical body to where I was confident with it again, was to take breath into those spaces of pain and not be afraid. So mm -hmm. breath helped me conquer the fear of that pain by engaging with it. And for a period of time, I became the guy with the broken back. I was, that was my identifier. So a lot of people identify themselves with the pain that they endure and they trust that pain. And then they're afraid to disrupt that pain. And for me, breath is a pain disruptor. It allows you to slowly control the entry to those areas and build confidence in moving blood into those spaces again. So the psychological aspects of protecting and tensing and hiding those areas, which is what stops circulation to begin with, it compounds the negative. Breath helps you open up that circulation back to those areas, warm it up, bring it back to life, if you will, and gain confidence slowly, methodically, instead of trying to force it back. And for me, that was a big psychological process for me. I had to learn to not identify with that fear or count on that pain anymore. Breath let me get beyond identifying myself as somebody in pain, because that was my identity for a while. And breath was the only thing that really got me out of it, Yancy, to be honest with you. Without, without being taught by some really cool people, the things that I know today, I would probably still be very depressed, very sedentary and afraid to move. So breath and movement help me conquer that. So anybody coming back from an injury of any kind, 
be brave. I have to say it's going to hurt a little bit. That's okay. Be brave and breathe into those spaces as much as you can so you don't hide from them and let them crystallize or shrink down and tighten up. You got to get in there with your breath and open up the circulatory system so nutrients and oxygen can be deployed to those areas so they start to loosen up and, and come back again. And today, people told me I might have been paralyzed from these injuries. They told me a whole bunch of things. I believed in the prognosis. I didn't believe in the diagnosis. I took control of that portion. So doctors told me a whole bunch of things I should believe in. And I said, no, I'll believe you told me that my bones broke. I get that. I see that on the x-ray. I'm not going to listen to the rest of what you're going to tell me. And breath helped me get through me creating my own diagnosis, which was a positive one, not a negative one. And that it takes courage and some tears, to be fair, well, to go through. As a as a coach, I've been coaching for 25 plus years, and you know, we we you get to feeling like you've 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 maxed out everything, and you you've dabbled in all the stuff that can help people in, uh, perform. And I I've been using Aerofit for for about a week now, a little short of a week. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited with what I'm, I'm feeling. And uh, I truly feel over the, you know, five or six years from now, we're going to look back at this time and say, Hey, that was, that's what people dove into RMT training, you know, RMT for, uh, for that extra, that extra benefit. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, listen, I know we need to, uh, is there any, or are there any key bullet points that Sean, that you or VJ want to talk about that we haven't hit on yet before we uh, kind of get close to, to closing this out. BJ, I'll let you go first, brother. Um, well, just wanted to reiterate, like, you know, this isn't a device we're just going to run and, uh, you know, keep this resistance on to try to just strengthen your diaphragm. Um, admittedly, you will get a stronger diaphragm, but there's so many other benefits that come along with this. Um, one of the things that I think we talked about right before we got on, but we didn't uh, bring it up in this webinar was um, that actually this training is like conditioning for your respiratory muscles, it, the same way that you would do conditioning for your skeletal muscles when you're doing an endurance sport. So Sean was saying, and I'm sure you can elaborate a little better than I can, that when the respiratory muscles get fatigued, and they start getting flooded with lactate, it can actually shock your system and, and your respiratory system into um, constricting a lot of the blood flow to your, uh, to your extremities, to your skeletal muscle, and pulling that blood in, which can actually uh, severely reduce your performance uh, almost immediately. Once that fatigue really sets into those respiratory muscles, it can back down everything else in your body. And I feel like that's just a good... Um, little topic that we didn't want to skip over yeah i know it's 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 huge and and actually the the academic studies use the terms and i'm careful with these terms because i don't want to sound like i'm exaggerating they you know they use the terms it delays and abolishes that reflex the abolish part i'm a little nervous about saying because uh, that that sounds extreme but remember you're talking about reaching lactate threshold as well so what you want what you want to do is you don't want that vaso you want that vasoconstriction back to the respiratory muscles not to happen because it gives you that extra period of time where you're still able to operate at when you reach lactate threshold, right? You're looking for those marginal gains. So it's a really important concept. It's a little bit complicated, but by doing training consistently five to 10 minutes a day, every day, you're going to stop that metabol reflex from happening and you're going to keep the fuel going back to those locomotor muscles which logically just makes sense, right? You want the legs to move. You don't want the blood and oxygen coming away from those leg muscles when you're, you know, got a couple hundred meters left in a race. You need that extra little bit of time to get across the finish line. So it's, it's, it's a pretty big deal. Um, well, Yancy, the, the one other thing I want to hit on that we didn't was how efficient respiratory muscular training is in the, in the scheme of using time every week. So I'll give a quick synopsis of a study that took place. There was, a, there was a study that took place on high intensity training versus respiratory muscular training for cyclists. And it was studied over a 40 kilometer time trial. So 40K of all out, right? And this was done over a period of time with multiple subjects. And I'll share the, I'll share the study uh, afterwards. But basically the outcomes were this. Um, both 
RMT and HIIT, high intensity training, had similar performance gains. So on the high intensity side, there was a 5% gain, three minutes in time gained over a 40 kilometer ride. And that's a lot of time over 40K to gain three minutes back. Okay. Doing RMT, doing RMT, 2.76 minutes were gained doing RMT in an isolated way, 4.6% increase versus 5% increase. Now here's where the cool part happens. That increase over the period of time that these subjects were doing this, RMT participants did 28 minutes of training to get that gain. High intensity group did 106 minutes at VO2 max to get that gain. So the amount of time spent and the percentage of gain brought into mix is much more efficient from a time usage perspective with RMT. So long story short, if you're not spending 28 minutes a week doing RMT to get 4.6% gains in pace, and again, it'll differ in OCR than being on a bike in 40K. But the theory there, this is maybe something you and I could work together on VJ down the road is to show these deltas, these differences. But Muscle oxygen and RMT efficiency is going to be similar across different sports. It's a very valuable and effective use of your time. Big, you know, decent gains with very little of time commitment. So I'd like to leave that to all the people in Spartan world. You know, most of us don't have time to add another three hour segment to our training every week, but to add 28 minutes to get 4% gain. I would argue that's something to look into at the end of the day. I love so, that. Now, 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 what if we take one control group and we have them do both? Let's do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, look, I've never met such a community of people willing to help each other and support each other. I bet you we could knock out a case study together. I'm pretty sure we can. I think it would be fun. I'll be your lab rat. Right on. I'll, let's do it. I'm serious. It'll be fun. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else, gentlemen, before we formally close this out and, and give out some deals. Yeah, let's do it. BJ, right. what do you got? Anything left? Uh, no, I can just say that, um, you know, it's, it, it, I, I have focus problems and, uh, you know, I've spaced sometimes of not using the AeroFit device, but every time that I put, put myself to it and been consistent for a few weeks, um, I feel so much better and just so much more confident going into competition and, um, you know, I feel like respiratory training, if, if, if there's any sport that could benefit from something like this, a mindfulness and breathing, a powerful respiratory system, I'd say OCR is it. And um, deny my results. Deny me. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, the, you know the, last, the last plug I got to give is, so when I got my, my, my device from AeroFit, you know, I'm 49 and I'm not, I'm not super tech savvy. What I consider a great device is when I get it and about a minute later, I feel like I know just about I, I, everything. Like I've, I understand the device and I'm on the app and it's clicking and I'm like one to two minutes in, not every device is that easy. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I'm, I'm training a couple minutes after I unbox this thing. I was like, okay, I, I like this. The fact that the old man can can quickly figure it out is, is important. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm older than you, Yancey, so you know, we're in the same we're in the same neighborhood. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm low, glad you feel that way. Low barrier entry. Low yeah, barrier yeah. entry. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's cool. But listen, right. but listen, I want I, let let's let's tell your let's tell your let's tell this beautiful community. By the way, thank you to everybody at Big Bear who I got to meet. Um, I, I have not been around such a committed group of supportive people in a long time. So Spartan, you're doing something right out there. It's, it's an amazing community. And I saw grandmothers and grandpas running up and down those mountains and God bless them. They were knocking it out. So, um, I mean, there's a real energy around this group. So all, more power to the Spartan team for, for doing what you're doing. You're inspiring so many people out there. It's really cool to watch. I, I just yeah. have to share that. We like to say we, we, we've created one of the largest fitness movements the world's ever seen. And it's fun when people like you get to actually see it at firsthand when thousands and thousands of people are on the side of the mountain um, oh. enjoying turning themselves inside out. Yeah, I was juiced up. It was a good time. That was a lot of fun. 
listen, everybody, thank you all for, for, for tuning in. We, we appreciate you. We appreciate the questions. Um, Sean, BJ, thank you guys so, so much from everybody at, at Spartan for, for coming on. That was a great educational session for me. Sean, one of the things that went through my mind is I want to have you on. Jared and I are, are co-hosting the Spartan Up podcast. I want to get you on so we can even do a deeper dive and rest Let's do it. science and, and MRT and, and, and all of it, man, I think it would be, I, I think it's something that the, uh, the webinar folks here would, would love to, to hear more about. So uh, thank you for getting us all, our, our minds kind of wrapped around it from, from at least an elementary level, um, from, from your kind of your PhD level breath and breathing brain, my friend. Oh no, it's all good. I mean, look, there's a lot to talk about, a lot to share. And nothing makes me happier. Everybody I work with knows this. If I can teach any a person a day to breathe better, I'm excited. So if we can get back at this again and, and start to share more knowledge, I, I'll, I'll be a very happy guy, Yancy, at the end of the day. So let's do it.